Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Happy Tuesday for those that are here live. Wherever you are, thanks for joining us. Another amazing day. Today is a very special day. It's a day I didn't know about until last night, believe it or not. You know, you, you keep on learning new stuff every single day. Yesterday, there was circ- those of you who are wherever you are in life. When I say things and Jewish, not Jewish, it's all good. It's spirituality. It all works. So um, hold on one. Yeah, hold on one second. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Let me just tell somebody to do something. And I'm with everybody here. Um, Okay, ready now. Today's a special day. It's a hidden holiday. Um, it's actually a, it's the fifth night of, very good, it's the fifth day of Hanukkah. So I didn't know this. Dina knew this, but I didn't know this. The fifth night of Hanukkah is that they say the darkest day of the year because it is the only day of Hanukkah that can't fall out on Shabbat. I'm getting some deep stuff over here, so. And therefore, it doesn't have a certain ability to connect to that level of holiness. It's considered to be the lowest day. And when you light the candles on the fifth night, you're supposed to have in mind that even in the lowest place, there's light. So this is the day in which no matter how low anybody feels in the world, no matter how anyone, how far somebody feels from their family, from their creator, from themselves, no matter where one is, in the depths, in the distance, this is the day of the year that we remind ourselves that even there, there's light. So it's a very powerful day. So happy fifth day of Hanukkah. Yesterday, we started to get down to a world that is really powerful. It's a world that we've all experienced but it's a world that we are losing more and more every single day. It's the world of immersion. And immersion is one of the most underutilized secrets of do. Have pulls us out of immersion all the time because we're always second guessing ourselves. We're always seeing if it's impactful already. It's the player that's on the field that looks up to the scoreboard every five minutes or starts to ask whether or not uh, people are listening or it's the when we constantly are looking for Is it going? Is it working? Do they appreciate it? Do they appreciate it? Um, Hold on one more second. I'm sorry. Okay. Just a busy day today. Yes. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? If we're constantly, constantly in that world, we're never fully immersed in wherever we are. And this is a key piece to our development, the recognition of immersion. Wherever we immerse ourselves, wherever we put ourselves, our brain starts to adapt around it. And if what we're adapting to is the actions that we're doing, we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper into those actions. And by getting deeper and deeper and deeper into those actions, we're getting better and better and better at those things. As we start to see things we couldn't otherwise see, we start to get more and more effective. And when we live in a place of immersion, the effectiveness of the actions that we're doing goes up exponentially. Now, 
to get to that level of immersion, you have to be willing to go someplace and stay there for at least a brief period of time. And only when you can go there and stay there can you start to see the things like we saw yesterday about the scuba diving. So when you're sitting in the conversation with somebody, if you're even thinking about your phone, you're missing the nuance of what they're saying, which is why someone could walk into a room and sit with somebody and understand it. Someone else walks in and they're in the middle of a negotiation and they're not pick, picking up on the nuances of it. Happens all the time. I remember when I was in the law firms, we had this one guy who was this incredible negotiator. He'd walk into a room and know exactly what's going on. And no one understood his greatness. I thought because he was so brilliant. He wasn't so brilliant. He only told me later that when he walks into a room, he is so fully immersed in that room that he picks up on the, 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 the I would say the fetches, but it's not, it's the increase sound by the person speaking. So he knows that when the person's saying this thing, he is really wants this thing. He lives and breathes the, the, the deal. So he is appreciative of all the nuances. And when you allow yourself to immerse in something, you can direct your hands in a much more effective way. It's the power of immersion. Is that when you're in it, you see things that people don't see. When you're fully invested in it, you're able to recognize things that no one else can recognize. But it only works if your brain knows that what I'm about to do is super important. And so as I'm walking in, I now need to pay full attention. And this is something that doesn't come when you live a life and you're always bouncing around. When we wake up in the morning and before we get our heads right, we go from A to B to C to D and E, and then in between three seconds, we're being pulled in 100 directions. We never really get our heads right when we walk into a room. So when we walk into that room, our purpose isn't high enough so that our immersion isn't high enough. The, the immersion of what we need to fully invest ourselves into something doesn't come because we haven't determined that that thing is important enough. I remember when I one time was able, you know, I went with the one time with the Orthodox Union to go see um, uh, the president of the United States. I don't tell you the story. So I went to see, um, it was George W. Bush. So we went down, there was a delegation of people that, uh, that was chosen. I was like the young guy. I was like the token young guy. You know, like they needed like someone like young. So that, thank God they picked me. We all went to Washington the night before. because Our appointment was like 9 a.m. We woke up in the morning. We stayed in a hotel. We drove to the, uh, we got, we walked to the White House. We had to go to like ante room to ante room to ante room to ante room. We lined up. And door opens. You can see the president. You get two minutes. Someone tries to say something funny. Everybody like laughs. The president makes a joke. Whether it's funny or not, everyone's going to laugh. It's the president, right? Everybody gather around, scrapes a picture. Reporters come in, and then we leave. I think the whole visit was, I don't know, under 10 minutes. To prepare for that visit, it took, forget the real prep, just to physically get there. I don't know, 10, 15, 20 hours. By the time you walked into that room, there was no one else doing anything but in that room. And as a result, you I remember part of that room that I don't remember for the rest of the day. I don't know what I did for the rest of the day. As I mentally prepare myself for the task that I'm about to do, I start to realize that the things in front of me are more important than the things that are around me. So when I walk into something, I allow myself to be fully immersed in it. And only when I'm fully immersed in something can I possibly do it in the best possible way. And that immersion is the secret to how some people find a way to be more impactful than others. 
because what they're doing something, they've already determined its importance. And when they're in it, they allow themselves to be immersed in it. And by being immersed in it, they allow themselves to see something that they never would have seen before. And then their brain picks up on things that is invisible to somebody else. Remember the schema? The schema allows us to process certain things and not others. The schema sees things that other people see are invisible. And as one immerses oneself in the uh, tasks at hand, whatever that is, they start to gain more from each task. So if you're watching this right now, and you, or you're listening to this right now, and you're not doing anything that requires brain power, you'll hear things in my voice that you would have missed. And if you're multitasking, I appreciate you watching in general or listening in general. If you're multitasking, you're picking up only the general nuances, only the general stuff. And so when we think about our day and we think about what we're about to do, and yesterday we spoke about this idea of purpose. And what purpose does is purpose, um, purpose increases the borders around our mind to stop the chaos. The way that works the reason why that works is because as the purpose increases in our minds for everything that we're doing or for anything that we're doing, we now tell ourselves that this thing is important enough for me to be fully immersed in it. So if I'm walking around and now I get to see uh, some random person, I may not be as into it, but if I now come into the, 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 the office of the CEO of this company, it's still two regular people, but my brain has told me, prepare yourself and immerse into this conversation and into this room, and all there is is this person. So the preparation, the, the, the mental focus that I'm bringing in that we spoke about yesterday is supposed to convince me that what's going on in front of me is worth all of my attention. And by putting all of my attention into it, now I am free to break all of the chaos around me and I am able to use every nuance of my mind, every nuance of my body, every nuance of my, 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 my habits, my history, my memory to figuring out what's in front of me. And it's in that distance where excellent lies. Let me make sure I, we can nail this right? It's in the distance between where, when you go down the surface, when you snorkel down and you're able to get through the first half of that initial surface, that's where everyone else lives. When I start walking into a surface and I start getting involved in something, when I'm in a conversation or I'm in a, in a document or I am anywhere in my life and I'm five or six inches deep, everyone's five or six inches deep. The person on their phone is five inches into deep. The person doesn't even know what they're doing is five inches deep, right? When we do anything in life, if I'm talking to my wife, who I know for let's say 20 years, but I'm five inches deep, I'm speaking to her the way the person who met her last month is speaking to her. It's still five inches deep. I get to go deeper because I know her longer, but I'm not going deeper because I'm distracted. So when I do anything in my life and I'm five inches deep in it because I'm coming out of something, so I go back up and down, up and down, or I'm distracted into something, I'm still five inches deep into it. So yeah, I'm sitting at my desk for five years doing the same work, but I'm only five inches deep. Okay, so my title says something, but I'm only five inches deep. Okay, I'm the parent of this kid, but I'm only five inches deep because I'm still thinking of five other things. As they're talking, I'm texting my friends. So all the knowledge that I have and all the history that I've accumulated and all the mental connections that I've made that are, that are there to serve me to be a little bit better than the person next to me, to be a little bit more quicker on my feet to see things that no one else can see it doesn't come up for me because i'm not allowing myself to go deep enough where i need it so i i start going deep into something and i'm only five inches deep to it and that's at that moment of five inches deep do i get a little bored 
or does usually the email come in or the sound from the background or whatever else is going on comes at me. And so that moment where I stay five inches deep or 10 inches deep and I stay with everybody else, even the person that just showed up, even the person that's not doing it as long as I'm doing it. That's where I am. So yeah, I've got all this history and yeah, I've got all this knowledge and yeah, I've been doing it for a long time, but I've never really been doing it deeply. And right now I could do it deeper than anybody else, but I'm not. And so really where our potential goes untapped is because our immersion is not deep enough, right? Our, ten, our, our potential isn't explored because our brain can immerse into something. So if you can almost see it like a, like a window or like an out, al- think of it like allocated dollars. Let's say like you have an allocated amount of, of attention. So yeah, if I gave all of my attention thing in front of me, plus 10 years of doing it or 20 years of knowing it, I, are you kidding me? I could pick up on something that no one else can pick up on. But if I'm only giving you 50% of my attention, I need 50% just to get to, to hear what's going on. I don't have any more brain power to like think about it and analyze it. So I could be living in something for years and never be living under the surface. And I wonder why I'm not more. I've been doing it for so long. I wonder why I'm not more successful. I've been, I've been at this. The reason is, yeah, you've been at this, but you haven't been at this in a deep level mm-hmm. because we're so busy being distracted. Life, greatness is not incremental. Greatness is exponential. Greatness is... Not one, two, three, four, five, ten. Greatness is only begins when you start going to a place that's deeper than everybody else. That's why it's great. Everybody lives at the surface. Very few people live in the depths. When we talk about being great about life, when we talk about being great in life, what we're talking about is playing at a deep level in life. I'm not talking about being brighter than somebody else or being being able to memorize more than somebody else. I'm talking about living our lives in a deeper place than everybody else in the areas that we're in. It's the greatness that's found in the depth of our lives. So if you're doing your job, if you're teaching a class, if you're having a conversation, if you're working and you're not for that period of time in a deep place, we're not really hitting your greatness. I don't mean deep, like, like you can't hear anything. You could be talking to somebody, but you're all into that conversation. And when you're all into something, your brain has the ability to take all of its power and put it into the thing in front of you. So when you go deep into it, you're able to see things and understand things, even if you're not doing it consciously, even if it's subconsciously, you're all there. When you're all there, you're able to be the greatest that you can be. That's why when you go away for a trip, you feel totally, and that's why you see this in camps. No one's ever sent their kids to summer camps. You see a kid like in, a, in their house and like mom and dad like want to do something like this is stupid. They go to camp one day and then same, the council, let's do this. The kid's like, yeah, like what happened to that kid? You see, if you send your kids to summer camps, they're like different children. They're immersed into the camp. They, they live and breathe the camp. When you live and breathe something, you become something you were before. You always had it in you. So when you think about immersion, even if it's not, even if it's micro immersion, it's not like we're going away to a, a cave or to a monastery or to a, a retreat, we're living our lives. When we start to guard around time and immerse ourselves in periods of time in our lives that are, at, that are dedicated towards the roles that we want to be great in, we have to recognize that if I want to be great in my life, I have different roles that I play. And the only way for me to be great at those roles is if I play at a deep level. 
the only way to meet a plate at a deep level is if I'm willing to, to block out the distractions. And the distractions to me are not just like innocent sure hold ons. They're actually pulling me away from the depth that I need to play at to be successful. So how do you do it? You work in a cubicle, people, fine, you figure it out. I don't know. There's, te there's techniques, but I just want to make sure the concept is done and then we'll, we'll, find, we'll finish this up tomorrow. Once we recognize that my do becomes greater when I am mentally immersed, we're starting to build like a sequence. Desire to be great at my life. That purpose starts to build before I walk in. As I walk in, it increases the importance of the thing that I'm doing, which then only convinces me that I need to be all into this. And then while I do that, I can now spend the time going to a deeper place of immersion into it. And in that deeper place, do I find things where I can contribute greatly? Hoping that sequence is making sense. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. Sorry if there's for the background noise. Um, and uh, with God's help, I can't wait to see you again tomorrow.